Okay gang, right now what we see is the APIC control screen. I'm on the dashboard for system. And we see now that we have actually learned nodes, we see that we have health scores that are being currently represented by the system. And we can see here tenants with a health of less than or equal to 99 are basically showing up empty. And that's one of the reasons for that is, is the fact that the three tenants that we inherit when we first build a Fabric Interconnect, we get a common tenant, an infrastructure tenant, and a management tenant. They are operating at 100. So if you want to be able to select the level that you want to see with regard to these messages for health scores, we'll talk about health scores when it comes time to troubleshooting, just understand that you need to play around with those little slider bars. But right now, out of the box, I would expect everything to be working here. Now, what I also want to do is I want to go into the terminal. And from my terminal connection, I'm going to go ahead and connect to my APIC and log in using the password that we configured. And again, what I want to do is I want to execute the show switch command. Now, again, what we're going to see here is, is that we notice the config lists the IP addresses. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can scale up this out a little bit more because I want to try to be able to fit everything in one long console here. And sure enough, we were able to do it. Now, I might be able to expand it just a little bit to make the text a little bit more readable but I don't think so. So, again, just trying to play around with, there we go, that's as big as I can get it, or as small as I can get it. So, we see here we have the IP addresses that were issued to the devices that are part of the VTEP. Now, if I want to SSH to, let's just say, leaf-1, and in here, log in with NXOS12345, you'll note that I can. And it put me in leaf one. Now, if I exit out and I say SSH2 and I look at the IP address, it's 10.0.72.65. 10.0.72.64, I think is what it was. 644 leaf one. Let's see what happens when I do that. Now, if I log in in XOS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and what we're going to see here is that I should again find myself connected to leaf one. Now, the problem with this is that if I were to fire up a host, so let's say I want to launch a jump box. So I'm going to fire up and say that I want to use jump box one. And we'll connect to here. And what I want to do is from this unit, and what I'm going to do first of all is scale everything. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little house cleaning here. As you can see, students have been doing their thing. And I want to get all of this cleaned up a little bit. So you can see there's a lot of stuff that's been going on in here. And what I would like to do is I would like to, from the console, be able to access that device. So if I came over here and said ping 10.0.72.64 and hit enter, I'm not going to have reachability to it. And the reason being is it's based on the illustration that we talked about. And that is, is that the one interface of the APIC is connected by OOB connection, but the leaves, although they're connected, they don't have IP addresses that have been assigned to them out of the OOB VLAN. Now that's one of the things that I want to be able to address here. So when we look at this implementation, ultimately what I want to do is I want to be able to see, I'll go ahead and exit and say show switch. I want to be able to see IPv4 addresses out of my OOB network being assigned here. Now how am I going to do that? Well, we're going to do that via policy. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to connect to the system and where I want to go in order to be able to implement this is going to be inside of a tenant. Now the tenant that I'm going to go to is going to be the tenant that is going to be the should be the management tenant. I'm going to go ahead and click tenants here. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to go into the management tenant. Now from the perspective of the management tenant, what I'm going to do is I am going to connect to the tenant. And we'll notice here there's going to be a, a field in here that says node management addresses right here. All right, now inside of here, I can use my static node management addresses, and I also have a policy in here for, that says default. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just say under static 
node management addresses, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a block. So with my, where's my mouse? I lost my mouse, sorry. So right click here and say create a static node management address. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue this to my nodes. But my problem is, is my nodes go from 101 to 102, and my spine is a 201. So here's the way I'm going to accomplish this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say 101 to 102. Now what we'll do is we'll make a separate range just for the spine switch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue an address out of the out-of-band range. And in this configuration, I'm going to go ahead and say the out-of-band management EPG is going to be default. And I'm going to go ahead and specify the address specification in here. And I'll say 10.1 and we'll say 80 one uh, we'll do this we'll say uh, 70.81 I'm gonna pick just a number out of nowhere and what we'll do is we'll say slash 16 we'll say the gateway is 10.1.0.1 because that's what it is and I do not have any IPv6 addresses so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit here and it's gonna say this will assign new management IP addresses to the selected range of nodes and we see here that it did indeed assign address 81 and 82 slash 16 now let's take a look at what happened on the equipment so if I come over here and say hit switch now we see these fields so if I were to come in here and hit try to ping this address from my jump box Let me. and we said that we would use ping 10.1.70 and I'll just see if I can hit 81 so we'll say here 81 and we should be able to ping which we can now the beauty of this is is from the jump box I now have the capability of being able to connect directly to this device and I'm going to go ahead and fire off a putty session to be able to do that so I'll go to downloads and we should have putty here so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and connect to 10.1.70.81 and we go ahead and hit enter and we should be able to log in so if I say admin NX OS 12345 I should have access to leaf 1 now the beauty of this is is from leaf 1 I have all of the configurational context that I need or may want to be able to play with so just keep in mind that what we did is we issued that out of band address now I want to issue an out of band address to the spine now the numeric sequence here I didn't want to go from 101 all the way to 201 because I would have tried to issue addresses to any leaf that were to come into the configuration and I may not opt or choose to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to create another static assignment and this one is going to go from 201 to 201 and it'll again be an out of band address range I'll use the default management EPG and I'm going to assign an address of 10.1.70.83 slash 16 gateway 10.1.0.1 and no IPv6 addresses and sure enough it should actually assign the appropriate address so I have 781 71 782 and 783 um, so with that being said all I want to do is verify that those addresses all show up so I should have addresses in all three of these columns now another aspect to this that's also going to be important to me is the ability to be able to do and utilize DNS, domain name service capability. So if I come over here right now and say ping 10.1.0.1, I can get to that address. In fact, if I were to ping 208.67.222.222, which is a DNS server, I can actually get through here and that DNS server is located outside of my network. However, if I were to come over here and say ping www.google.com and hit enter, I'm not going to be able to ping Google because I do not have a way of being able to translate this name into an IP address. So that is the job of DNS. So if we come in here and we take a look at the configuration and we look at the idea of a DNS domain, what we see here is I have nothing configured and that's definitely something that I'm going to need. Also if we come over and we take a look at the idea of being able to say let's say SSH to leaf1 since this is where I am already. Leaf-1. Other things that I could do in XOS12345 is I could execute again ping uh, www.google.com 
no, no go. And I could say show NTP and let's say statistics and what we're going to see here is nothing and if I say show NTP and let me see what my options are here. I forgot what my keywords are so I shall say um, we'll say peer status. Nah, fat fingered it. Peer status. And we look at the output here. What we're going to see here is, is there's nothing for me to see. So if I say show NTP peers I have no time protocol. So these are all things that we were going to uh, address, but I just demonstrated the fact that all of the devices have been issued IP addresses, and those addresses were issued via the application of a policy to be able to get IPv4 addresses out of my OOB infrastructure assigned to the management zero interfaces of these devices. That's the other thing that I want to look at. If I go back to show leaf 1, actually if I say SSH to leaf 1, and we take a look at the output of my show IP interface brief command because remember this is a switch let's take a look at these interfaces and what we're going to see here is, is notice that 10.1.0.81 slash 16 was actually assigned to the management zero interface now this interface is a physical interface on this switch that is actually connected to my management VLAN just like everything else so from here I should be able to ping a 7k so if I come over here and say ping 10.1.7.71 I have the capability of being able to reach it. I should be able to say SSH, let's just say admin at 10.1.71 and yes and in XOS 12345 and I'll be in the 7k chassis for the ACI lab. So now this device is indeed part of my OOB infrastructure and is going to provide me capabilities that I did not inherently have in the configuration. So what we're going to do next is we're going to configure DNS, Domain Name Services, and we're going to implement that in the very next video. Till then, I'm Terry Vinson and I'd like to thank you for learning Data Center with me.